Thank you because you are our Heavenly Father, after whom our lives are patterned, after whom our conduct should be patterned, after whom our behavior should be patterned. We are here on earth as the representative of you living and abiding in heaven, ruling and reigning from heaven, controlling and directing all the affairs of the world, and that you do lovingly. You do cheerfully. You do sacrificially. Lord, we pray that the grace to really possess the nature of this heavenly Father be given unto all fathers of our time in Jesus' name. Amen. Speak to our hearts, O Lord, as we share together now. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Again, I welcome you to the worship service today in Jesus' name. I felt today I really have to be here uh, because we've been busy over there in Kingston for quite some days. And uh, some of the people are still on the road now. And um, some of us came back just this morning. And we felt let's still be here together to celebrate Father's Day together. And heaven will celebrate us all together in Jesus' name. As we look at the message for today, I'll be talking on something you don't often hear on Father's Day. I'll be talking on something that the fathers will have their opportunity of bearing out their mind, they would like to talk about it. I would like to talk about something that will bring hope to all and every father in the house. I'd like to talk about something that will bring joy and happiness to your hearts. And i also talk about something that will remind you of your calling as a father, of your commitment as a father, and of the expectations of the world from you as a father. I'll be talking on the message titled, Scars for Your Stars. Sorry, Stars for Your Scars. Shall we say that? Stars for Your Scars. The stars I'm talking about is the honor, the glory, the reward, that comes from God and God alone. Sometimes it comes from man. But many a times, if you pay attention to the situation of fathers in our time, of our time, you come to understand that the role of the father, the authority of the father has been eroded in this nation and many nations of the world. The position and the placement of the father is no more there. As a matter of fact, like uh, somebody said, things have fallen apart and the center cannot hold. And many fathers are just hanging in there because they don't want to go to jail. You will not end up in jail in Jesus' name. Many fathers are sad and sorrowful because of the situation around them, situations in the family. And when I talk about fathers, I talk about fathers in the family. I talk about fathers in the church. I talk about fathers in the nation. I talk about fathers in different places, even in the secular, because leadership is no longer what it used to be anymore. But then, because of this challenge or challenges that are confronting the leaders, the fathers in particular, many of them are backing down. Many of them are backing out. And many of them are thrown in the towel and saying, well, let be what will be. The Lord himself, who is the first father of all fathers, did not give up. We will not give up. I said we will not give up. Maybe you don't understand that not everybody appreciates the person of God, the position of God, the power of God. Not everybody even calls him God. Some even curse him. Some even say he doesn't exist. Some even say they don't know him. Some are even doing everything possible to just uh, uh, neutralize his effect in every place. And you look at all the works of God in many places. They are doing everything possible to just make sure that uh, that God is not recognized. But whether we like it or not, God will reign. Yeah. I say God will reign. Stars for your scars. As a father, understanding the family, 
You are there as the man. The woman is there as the woman. And we are all created differently. You were created for a purpose. You have a role. You have a goal. The woman is created for a role and a goal in the family. And uh, everybody will play their role. The problem comes when you as a man, you're trying to be the woman. But when you the woman, you're trying to be the man. No. God has a purpose for putting the man and the woman in the family. And uh, the purpose of your creation will be fulfilled in Jesus' name. You know, I told you that many fathers are sad and sorrowful. Many of them are broken hearted. Look at the Bible in the book of Psalm 147, verses 3 to 5. Verses uh, 3 to 5, Psalm 147. He healed the broken in heart and binded their wounds. He telleth the number of the stars. He called them all by their names. Great is our God and of great power. His understanding is infinite. Now, God understands your position. He understands your problem. He understands your challenges. And he knows that what you are going through. And that is why as a father, you want to stand in your office as a father. And you want to perform your duty as a father. No matter how broken hearted you may be. The Bible says the healing of the Lord is coming your way in Jesus' name. Because he said, he let the broken in heart and binded their wounds. You see, as a father, you are the one that says, stand up, sit down. Don't go there. Don't do that. And then, when you are the one giving those instructions and directions and the control, and then the mother doing her own job is saying, my daughter, my son, don't worry. Come around here. And then he's the one patting. And the mother is the one saying, after the father has frowned and everything, the mother is saying, okay, what are you going to eat? And as a child, you lean much yours towards the woman. You lean much towards your mother. And then the father is feeling this way or that way. That is the nature. You are in the family for checks and balances. I say you are in the family for checks and balances. And you will not fail in your duty in Jesus' name. And uh, you know, there are people that, uh, and some women also, they make the work harder for their husbands. But I pray for all our women that they will make the work easier for their husbands in Jesus' name. That is why when Paul the Apostle look at all the burden of ministry, the challenges of ministry, as a father in the ministry, as a father in the faith, he got to a point in Galatians chapter 6 verse 17, he cried that said, from henceforth. Everybody say from henceforth. He said, from henceforth, from now on, let no man trouble me, for I bear in my body the marks of the Lord Jesus. And so, Father, you are bearing some marks on your body, but the healing of the Lord is there for you in Jesus' name. Because of those marks, hear this, because of those marks, some are giving up. Some are giving up. And when God looks around, he said, I am the father of all creation. I remain as a father. I stand as a father. I still do my job and duty as a father. And then he looks around and I see this father has given us his position. That father has given us his duty and responsibility. That father is not there in the house for the children, for the wife, and for the family. And that other one, he doesn't even know whether he's going forward or coming backward. And God said, I search for a man. I search for a man. Ezekiel 22 verse 30. And I sought search for a man among them. Among the family. I sought for a man, a leader among the people in the church. I sought for a man among them that should make up the hedge that, and stand in the gap before me for the land that I should not destroy it. But what's the last statement? I found none. I found none. What I'm saying is, you come to the church, many churches, in case you don't know it. Things are going the way they are going in the churches because the church leaders and pastors are beginning to feel that people are not ready for the truth anymore and so they just let go. Let anybody do whatever they want to do. And some will say, they are adult, they are adult. Let them have it their own way. That is not God's way because the Lord is saying that if they have it their way, the end result will be destruction. Therefore, I, I suffer a man among them that you make up the hedge, that will stand in the gap, that will speak for me. 
that we stand in his office so that I don't destroy the land, but I find none. Fathers, God will find you. He will find you in your duty post in Jesus' name. And uh, when we talk about scars, understand to be a father. It's not easy. The father of faith. I'm not talking of Abraham now. I'm talking about the Lord Jesus Christ himself. After he had labored and served the generation of his time unto our generation and the generations to come, he was, he was denied. He, he, was, he, was, he was wounded. He was in uh, well, he was imprisoned. He was hung on the cross. Eventually, eventually, all those scars led to the star that we are talking about today. Because Jesus is the star of our life. I said he's the star of our life. You know, after he, woke, he, he rose up from the dead, having told, he told his disciples that I'm going this way, three days I'm going to rise up. You know, after he rose up, some still didn't believe. Maybe you're a father. And then you have taught your children, you have taught your wife, you have taught your family, this is the way, this is the way. Maybe as a pastor, you have taught your church, this is the way. And things don't seem to be going the way it ought to be going. Listen to this, you are not the first person. Jesus went through that path. And uh, if they don't believe you, because they don't believe the Savior, first of all, even among his disciples, they don't believe him. Luke chapter 24, verse 39. Luke 24, 39. Jesus got to the point, he said, behold my hands and my feet. What was he saying? He said, look at the scars. Look at the scars. Look at the wounds I bore for you. That is I myself. Handle me and see, for his spirit hath not flesh and bones as ye see me have. Jesus is, was saying, to the people that all these marks you are seeing, all these cars you are seeing, are the proofs and the evidences of what I did for you. Why well, I say I say I quote that to let you know that as parents, as father, every time, every time that opposition is coming your way, persecution is coming your way, rejection is coming your way for the things you are trying to do in shifting your family, correcting your family, uh, uh, redefining your family, and it's not working out the way it ought to be, understand, those are because you are doing something. Now, there may be some fathers that will tell you, I never spank my child. Good for them. They are not the examples of our Heavenly Father. Because our Heavenly Father said, the child that the Father loveth, he does what? He chastises. So, that Father that said, I never chastised my child, my daughter, my son, is not imitating the Heavenly Father because the Bible says that children are estranged, the wicked are estranged from the womb, Psalm 58 verse 3, <clears throat> the wicked and strength from the womb, they go astray as soon as they be born, speaking lies. So if you never correct your own child because of the wrong thing they are doing, and you think that is the right thing, well, good luck unto you. And the Bible says that uh, you should discipline a child while they are young. Am I right? And you never discipline your own child. It means you are not like your heavenly father. And maybe you don't know. We, even we adults, sometimes God corrects us. And uh, our leaders in the church or at work, they correct us. Those corrections and disciplines are not easy for the body. But we bear them. We bear them. Those corrections are to make us better in life. And we shall become better in Jesus' name. So if anybody, maybe the state... The government are saying, don't correct them. Even though I don't think any government says, don't correct your children. What I know the government is saying is, don't abuse your children. And then you now take it far and say, the government says, don't do this, don't do this, don't do this. And then you give up on them. At the end of the day, that same government will be the one to throw them into jail. So, you do your part as a father and God will back you up in Jesus' name. I said, God will back you up in Jesus' name. And so to all fathers that are weary-hearted, to all fathers that are discouraged, to all fathers that are, dis that are troubled, to all the fathers that are down 
casted, he hear the word of the Lord. First Corinthians chapter 15, verse 58. Therefore, my beloved brethren, my beloved brethren, be ye steadfast, unmovable, always abandoned in the work of the Lord, for as much as ye know that your labor is not in vain in the Lord. Your labor will not be in vain in Jesus' name. Maybe because of your child, you even got into trouble. You even got disciplined. And because of that, you are saying, well, uh, I won't do my job anymore. No, you don't do that. If Jesus were to say that, then he wouldn't have gone to the cross. If Jesus were to say that, uh, the spanking is too much, the stripes are too much, uh, he wouldn't have died for you and for me, but he bore it all. He bore it all. He bore it all. And so whatever we have to bear, the Lord will give us the grace to bear it for the sake of our family in Jesus name First Peter chapter 3 verse 18 for Christ also for Christ also had once offered suffered for sin Christ also suffered for sin was it the sins he committed I'm asking you now no, he once suffered for sin, the just for the unjust, that ye might bring us to God being put to death in the flesh but quickened by the spirit but quickened by the spirit the lord will quicken us all in jesus name the lord will keep us in jesus name galatians chapter 6 verse 9 and let us not be weary in well doing let us not be weary in well doing fathers let us not be weary in well can all the fathers say that with me now one two go Say it after me. And let us not be weary in well doing. For in due season we shall reap if we faint not. Now lift up the right hand and say in the name of Jesus. By the power of the Lord, I will not faint. I will endure to the very end and reap the reward of my labor in the name of Jesus. You will not labor in vain in Jesus' name. And I say the same thing for all our mothers as well and all the leaders in the church in Jesus' name. Understand, somebody said, the quality of a father is seen in the goals, the dreams, and the aspirations is set, not only for himself, but for his family, and then I add, and also for his community. And so, when we want to look at the father, we want to see what are the goals the father is setting. If you have a father that does not set any goal, a father that does not correct, a father that, not, that, not, that does, does not direct, a father that does not say, uh, this is how far you can go, this is how far you cannot go, then that is not a true father. He's a fake father. He's a false father. He's a destructive father. He's an unholy and ungodly father. But then, when we have fathers that set goals for us, goals of accomplishments in life, goals of progress in life, goals of greatness in life, dreams of greater things for us, those are fathers. But while you are going through this thing, uh, somebody said this, and I am just quoting this as the person put it. He said to the great father, that word father can be spelled differently by the man father, by the children, and then by the wife or the mother in the family. And then he said, that word A is faithful. A for faithful. But then when the child look at that same man that is faithfully doing his job, faithfully serving the family, faithfully laboring for the family, Say faithfully sacrificing for the family, the child look at the father and turns the F around and says, It's a fear monger. Fear monger creates fear. He behaves like a lion. Everybody runs away. And then the woman looks at the same man and says, It's Mr. Fix It All. Mr. Fix It. Forceful. Fault finder. And yet, what are you doing? You are just faithfully doing your job. I said, what are you doing? And then, what are you being called? Fear monger. What are you being called? Fix it man. What are you being called? Forceful. What are you being called? Fault finder. God will deliver you. 
I think today should be the day of deliverance for the men. Amen. Amen. And then, when, when you look at the letter A, the letter to the man is, you are attentively, you are paying attention to everything going on, and on the basis of the attention you are paying to everything you are acting, and then, what does the child see in you? you say, you are too annoying. You are annoying. Have you ever heard of that before? Yeah, you are annoying. Amen. And then your wife look at you and say, you are apathetic. What does that mean? You are indifferent. You are uninterested. You are unconcerned. <laughs> Sometimes they even say you are lazy and dispirited. The Lord will deliver you. Amen. Amen. Now, come again to that, uh, the, the word father. What's the next letter in the father now? T. Now, somebody help me with that. Now, maybe you get it. I say, father, what do you do with the T? You teach, you train. Amen? Now, understand that teaching is not an easy job. Some people enroll in school, and before you know it, they quit because uh, they can't cope. The same thing in the family, and some will tell you that teacher is too difficult. That teacher is too tough. You forgot that that same teacher has taught many people that are now medical doctors and engineers and uh, professors and whatsoever, that teacher is very bad. Look into yourself. Amen? So, as a father, you are who now? You are a teacher. You are a teacher. And you are a trainer as well. When you teach, you are training. Uh, training is, uh, uh, teaching involves uh, disseminating information. Training involves, uh, after the dissemination of information, you get them involved in practicing it. So you are doing your job as a teacher, and your child looks at you as using them as a tool. As a tool. Or at other times, they look at you as yourself, you are the tool. At what point are you a tool? When they need money, you are their father. Am I communicating? When they need uh, this and that, they remember you. But when they don't need anything, you are not there for them. They don't know you. So you are just like a tool they use. They twist around when they need you, and then your wife look at you. What does she see? TV washer. All it does, just come back, cross his leg, and do what? Watch TV. They don't understand. That in every organization, you have to get to those levels to understand that the people on top do more of the use of their brain for the company to survive. And if any company collapses, of course you go there, you see people in the factory, they are working, they are sweating, they are doing everything, and then you go to the office of the, maybe the director, and then he's just sitting down there. Directors don't run up and down and sweat like you see ordinary people. The higher you go, the cooler it becomes. That is what they say. But in reality, on the physical, it looks cooler. But on the inside, it's not cooler. It's actually hotter. It's actually tougher. Because the head, the leader is the one that is thinking about if this happens, that is this. If this happens, this is going to be the result. He's the one factoring everything out, planning everything out, not wanting anything to collapse, because if their company collapses, and then another company takes over that company, who are the first people to be fired? The CEOs. The CEOs. And they will say, if you as a CEO, if you as a director have planned well, use your brain well, thought right, and uh, strategize properly, the company would not have been, uh, what's, give me the word now, bankrupt. Thank you so much. So they fire them. They fire them. And so as a father understand, mother understand, children understand, the father thinks for the family, plans for the family. The father is the one that we want to know is do we have money, enough money in the account? Do we have more, enough money to pay bill, buy food, go to school, uh, transportation and everything? He's the one doing all of all those things and so he's not just a TV watcher. The man is a hero. 
the men went to bed. I said the man is, is an hero. And the Lord will make you one in Jesus' name. But the children will look at you as being heavy-handed. At what point do you become a hero? When all your labors are coming out well. When your sacrifices are being rewarded. When your children are coming out well. You become a hero. You become a hero. When you look around and you can see, I'm able to leave inheritance for my children, you become a hero. But when you look around and you regret ever passing through this world, then you are a disappointment to your generation. That will not be your portion in Jesus' name. But while you are busy working and laboring, the children see you as being heavy-handed. When you are trying to prevent them from wastefulness, they think you are mean-spirited. They think you are heavy. They think you are tough. And then your wife look at you and see, well, we have a handyman in the house. Handyman. Um, the toilet is not flushing. What do you do? Wait for the handyman. The light bulb goes out. What do you do? Wait for the handyman. Now, if you don't know, I am the handyman in my house. Amen? No matter how small the thing is, I have to come and fix it. You don't fix it, it never gets fixed. Praise God. It is not just in my house. It is like that in most homes, 90 something percent of the homes. Am I correct? It is like that. So it's not as if, uh, so if you see your wife calling handyman, don't say you're a Satan. No, she's not a Satan. That is who you are to them. Amen? Because, listen, they are the ones leaning on you, depending on you as the man. It's not because they meant evil, but that is just the way it is. And uh, as a man, you are doing your best to encourage everybody, to support everybody. I'm on the letter E now. And then uh, the children look at you as an entertainer, and your wife looks at you as an exaggerator. You exaggerate too much. Amen? Praise the Lord. Um, uh, you are trying to just uh, uh, make everything look good. You are trying to promote everything and everything. And uh, you exaggerate too much. The Lord will help us in Jesus' name. And then the letter R, I told you I'm, I got this from somewhere. Uh, you are seen as a recreationist. Of course, I'm adding my own illustrations and explanations to it. As a recreationist, uh, but then your child looks at you. They may not say directly, but the things they will tell you. They look at you as being retarded. They tell you, you don't know it. You don't know anything. They talk to you as if uh, your generation has passed. Do you know that every child thinks they know better than their parents? Do you know that? They always think they know. What, what, what are they telling you? You are retarded. That's what they're saying. And then your wife looks at you and says, really cool. Really cool. Let's come back to the scripture. As a minister of the gospel, in your family, as a father, you are the minister there. I say you are the minister and this there. this is it. It says, a study was done about 10 years, uh, where God is said, by then it was 10 years ago, and it found that conservative Christian parents whose parenting style could be described as authoritarian, I'll read it again, raised some of the most well-adjusted kids in history. I repeat that again. The study found out that conservative Christian parents whose parenting style could be described as authoritarian raised some of the most well-adjusted kids in their generation. A researcher named Wilcox examined data from the National Survey of Families and Households discovered that the homes of conservative religious parents were characterized both by strict discipline and an unusual warm and expressive style of parent-child interaction. So, if you are now saying because of what you are going through, you don't want to, I mean, these are people of the world now doing their research. 
and they're coming to understand that Christian homes, Christian families, where discipline is in place, those children always come out better in life. Your children will come out well. I say your children will come out well. In the name of Jesus. That research I found that most conservative religious parents were authoritative. Yes, they were. We she described as having consistent and firm discipline as well as high level of warmth and parental responsiveness. I didn't put it together. But you know, even in the church today, people don't want us to talk. Women don't want us to talk. Children don't want us to talk. We will talk. I said we will talk. And the Lord will back us up in Jesus' name. And then, I got this again. Uh, most of you must have known about James Dobson of the family, uh, what do they call it now? Uh, radio thing. And then, James, Dr. Dobson reported the findings of a study done with school children. A group of educators decided to remove the chain-like fences from around the school playground. They believed the fences promoted feelings of confinement and restraint. I don't know if you are, if you are getting the message right away. The curious thing they noticed, however, that as soon as the fences were removed, the children huddled in the center of the playground to play. What is that telling us? Children need boundaries. And who is to set the boundary? Who is to set the boundary? The fathers are to set the boundary. A good father makes sure he kiss, his kids knows where the fences are. And that's just what Samuel did with his children. And before Samuel died, there is something he said unto the people. He said, be sure to fear the Lord and serve him faithfully with all your heart. Consider what great things he has done for you. If you persist in doing evil, both you and your king will be swept away. Samuel saw himself as a father to the nation. And they gave that instruction, never depart from the commandments of the Lord. To be able to do that and get stabbed for your own scar. Number one, you must be a prisoner of the Lord. A prisoner of the Lord. Until you become a prisoner of the Lord yourself. And as a prisoner, please understand, a prisoner does not have the freedom and the liberty that every other free people have. A prisoner cannot just go to anywhere. A prisoner cannot just do anything. A prisoner is confined, and we are confined by the authority of the word of God. And the grace of God will keep us true in Jesus' name. How can we be a prisoner to the Lord? By being born again. By living a righteous and holy life. By allowing our life to be directed by the word of God. And then, understand, if you're a father indeed, that you are a partner in a marriage relationship. A partner in a marriage relationship. And can two work together except they agree? It's not possible. Physically, you are married to a woman. Spiritually, you are married to the Lord. We are told in the scripture, in the book of Isaiah, that thy husband is thy maker. So, as a partner with the Lord, and as a partner with your wife, you want to be sure that things are done decently and in order. And I told you earlier on that as a, as a father, you are the pastor in your family. You are the one that is uh, uh, preaching the word of God. Again, teaching the word of God. Preaching the word of God. Sometimes the things you preach and teach, the thing is too hard. It's too tough. Understand, in every animal you find, you always, it's not always flesh, flesh, flesh. You also find bones there. And so, in the family, you may find that, and as a pastor, uh, in the church, as a pastor, in your family, as a pastor, wherever you find yourself, you don't just say, well, because some people are not accepting the bone part of your life and ministry and ministration, then you throw in the chair, well, it will not happen in Jesus' name. And then, as a pastor that preaches and teaches, you understand also that you are also the priest in that family. What does the priest do? The priest intercedes for the family. The priest makes sacrifices for the family. That then means you will continue to make sacrifices for as long as you remain the father in that family. 
They will continue to make sacrifices for as long as you remain the leader in that church, in that business, and the Lord will give you the grace in Jesus' name. And then understand also that you are the provider for that family. Whatever they need spiritually, physically, materially, psychologically, uh, emotionally, you always want to provide it. And the grace of God will keep us true in the name of Jesus. Again, I told you earlier on, the Bible says, and I sought for a man among them that should make up the hedge and stand in the gap, but found none. But found now. The Lord will find us in Jesus' name. All the ridicule you get, the insult you get, the names you get, the rejection you get, the abandonment you get, uh, the name calling you get, uh, uh, just understand that the Lord will reward you for everything in Jesus' name. So, to get this star, you must be born again. You must be born again. Born again, born again. But, but the Bible tells us in um, Ephesians chapter 2, verses 8 and 9, that for by grace are you saved through faith, and that not of yourselves, it is a gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. Lest any man should boast, understand, without salvation, you are heading away. You don't, without salvation, you, can, you, you are living in darkness. You are not in the light, and you cannot lead anybody into the light. And anything and everything you think you are doing will be a waste. The Lord will help us in Jesus' name. Matthew chapter 18, verse 3, and said, Verily I say unto you, except ye be converted. Except you be converted. If you're a man, you are not converted. You are not born again. Understand that you are not in the center of the will of God. And the Bible says you become as little children in order for you to enter the kingdom of God. Not that alone. You also need to understand that in order for you to be a man with a star, you learn to lean on the strength of the Lord, not on your own strength. You lean on the strength of the Lord, Isaiah chapter 40, verse 30. Isaiah chapter 40, verse 30. It says, even the youth shall faint and be weary, and the young men shall utterly fall. But they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. They shall run and not be weary, and they shall walk and not faint. You will not faint. You will not fail. You will not fall. You will not falter in Jesus' name. Isaiah chapter 47, verse 10. Isaiah chapter 47, sorry, 147, verse 10. He delighted not in the strength of the horse. It's not by power, it's not by mind. He delighteth not in the strength of the horse. He taketh no pleasure in the legs of a man. That is saying that the arm of the flesh will fail you. We need the grace of God. We need the wisdom of God. We need the guidance of the Holy Ghost to lead our homes and family as men. If you are going to be a man with star, you see uh, the members of the choir, they, they sang that beautiful song for us, and they said, all that I have are all for Jesus. All that I have, all that I am, and all that I hope to be is Jesus. No matter what you have, don't think it's by your power or by your might or by your strength. You are who you are by the grace of God. I say you are who you are by the grace of God. And sometimes when we think that our family are not appreciating us, understand that uh, they are just doing things within the limit of their understanding. Uh, the children, when they sang for us earlier on, uh, they, they, in that song, we said, sometimes they take the fathers for granted. And then in that song, they also said, if not for the father, they would have been lost. And understand, a child composed that song, that they sang. Uh, well, whether a child, I'm not really sure, but I saw the name of the, the one that composed the song. Uh, if not for you fathers, Many children would have been lost. So don't give up. But then, make sure you give your own life for Christ first of all. Understand, there are many single mothers in this nation. 
look at the children of all the single mothers, you realize that many of them, their lives are upside down. The lives of your children will not be upside down in Jesus' name. And so, please, for goodness sake, connect with God, and God will connect with you. Lean on the Lord for your salvation. Lean on the Lord for your strength. Lean on the Lord for daily supply. For daily supply. Uh, Philippians 4, 19 says, For my God shall supply your needs according to his riches in glory by Christ Jesus. Lean on the Lord for wisdom. For wisdom. For soundness of the Spirit. If any of you lack wisdom, the Bible says, let him ask of God that give it to all men, how? Liberally. And upbraid it not. And uh, it shall be given unto him in Jesus' name. When you are such a man, I'm trying to round up the message. When you are such a man that one stars uh, for your scar, then you have to learn to lead. Learn to lead. And the only one that can teach you how to lead is the Lord. And the only guide you can get is from the word of the Lord. And you have to lead. And when you lead, you lead yourself first of all. There is a saying that the best watchman is the one that is able to watch over his own soul. If you cannot lead your own soul, if you're a liar, and then you're telling your children, don't tell lies. If you're a thief, and you're telling your children, don't steal. You're not leading yourself. You cannot lead anybody. You cannot lead anybody. If you're not living a moral life and you expect morality from your children, if you're not disciplined in your life and you expect discipline from your children or from your family, it doesn't work that way. So you must be a man that will learn to lead your own self, lead your own soul. And that's why the Bible tells us in the book of Galatians chapter 5, verses 16 and 17, Galatians Chapter 5, verses 16 and 17, it says, This I say then, walk in the spirit, and ye shall not fulfill the laws of the flesh. For the flesh lusted against the spirit, and the spirit against the flesh. And these are contrary the one to the other, so that ye cannot do the things that ye would. Paul went further to say in Galatians chapter 2, verse 20, he said, I am crucified with Christ. I am crucified with Christ. Please, fathers, look up here. Maybe mothers, look up too. In order for you to be the kind of a man that God wants you to be, in order for you to have stars on your crown, in order for you to have the joy of the Lord, peace within. You know, many at times we are looking for peace from our wives, peace from our children, peace from an environment, and we listen to what people are saying. If you don't get the peace from God, you have all men the most miserable. No matter what anybody have said, no matter what anybody may be saying, ask yourself, ask yourself, am I in the will of God? Am I being led by the Spirit of the Lord? Am I doing things that are right? Am I living a disciplined life, a crucified life myself? Am I living for the glory of the name of the Lord? If I really want to be a man that will glow and shine in life, Paul said, I am crucified with Christ. Um, nevertheless, I live. He said, yet not I, but Christ liveth in me. Is Christ living in you? You want to be sure that anything you do is not out of malice. It's not out of bitterness. It's not out of hatred, but you are doing what you're supposed to do. If the cause of you doing what you're supposed to do, the way it ought to be done, with love and with affection, with patience, and you get in trouble, praise the name of the Lord. I said, praise the name of the Lord. But you know what the problem is? Many at times, many a, you know, I, 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 I love a, a somebody over here sometimes ago. He came to me and said, Father, uh, pa Pastor, he said, I need to step down from work in the church. I said, tell me what happened. And he said, I thank God for my life, but the life of my children are not encouraging. And I don't see myself qualified teaching other people, leading other people when these children are behaving this way. And uh, I looked at him and I looked at the children and I said, Sir, I will not release you from working in the church. I said, the reason is this. Those children are no more underage children. They are adults. And most of them are not even living with you. 
Now they will be responsible for their life. I said, yes, they were still young, I understand, and I will agree with you. But now, because they are no longer children anymore, of course they are your children, but they are grown up. You are talking about children of 20-something, 30-something years. And because of their life, no, it's not going to be so. Jesus did not because of his mother and his father stepped down from ministry. Somebody say amen to that. Jesus did not because of his brethren stepped down from the ministry. He continued. But if they were to be children under your care, children under that are still under age, that is fine. That is understood. That is what the scripture was talking about. But now you have done your part. They are grown up. They are on their own. Even if, as an unbeliever, you fail, but now they are adults. Many of us came to Christ under the leadership of parents that never knew the Lord. You are not responsible for them. Amen? But if they are still children under your care, then that is a different thing. And the Lord will help you to raise them and to deliver them in Jesus' name. But well, then understand what I said. There is need for you to discipline your own self and discipline your own life. And as you look at uh, the, the scripture, you know, we, the Bible tells us uh, about the Lord's Prayer. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, that we be done on earth uh, as it is in heaven. Give us this day, what? Our daily bread and uh, and on and on. What does that tell you as a father? As a father. Understand that as a father, our heavenly father now, who art in heaven, that his name must be hallowed, is in a dignified position. He's a dignified father. You must be a dignified father. Amen. He says, hallowed be the name. What does that mean? That means our Heavenly Father has the nature of holiness, righteousness, and purity. That is what you hallow. That then means, as a father, you are not the one that is caught, even if nobody catches you, you are a liar. If nobody catches you, you are a tea. If nobody catches you, the Spirit of God is bearing witness against your spirit, not with your spirit, against your spirit, that you are not living right. So, hallow be thy name. It's a depiction of holiness that is expected in us as fathers. He said, thy kingdom come. Thy kingdom come. When you say somebody's kingdom, that is talking about ownership. Ownership of that kingdom. It's talking about headship of that kingdom. That family is your own kingdom. Take care of it. I said take care of it. He said, thy will be done on earth. Unfortunately, uh, and uh, maybe I should talk with mothers. Please, mothers, stop working against your husbands. Because God has an expectation from them in the leading and the guidance of the family. Work with them, support them. Any king in any kingdom has the authority over that kingdom. But when in our nuclear family, nuclear family, we are working against the will of God, uh, that will not be good. It says that we be done on earth. That is a sign of submission by all and sundry. Submission to the will of the mighty father, the first father. And we are the representatives. We are the earthly father. Please pay attention here. Our heavenly father is the maker of all things. The earthly father is the God here on earth. Somebody say amen to that. Amen. That is the God on earth. Without the father, there be no children at all. At all. Yes, praise God. The mother carried them in the womb. But the origination of it from, is, is from the man. And the, the Bible is saying there must be submission in the family. Thy will be done on earth. As it is done in heaven. It says, give us this day our daily bread. It's an indication that as a man, you must be the breadwinner of your family. Your wife can support you. But you must be the breadwinner of your family if you want stars for your scars. The Lord will help you in Jesus' name. It says, forgive us our trespasses. That tells us that there will be offenses in the family. And when there are offenses, what do you do? 
there must be forgiveness in the family as well. Lead us not into temptation. Of course, I don't have all the time. The Bible says, Father, um, do not uh, provoke your own children and so on and so forth. Uh, then it says, deliver us from all evil. Deliver us from evil is an indication of the protective power of the father over the family. You protect them from danger. You protect them from evil. You protect them from the forces and the powers of darkness. And then it says, uh, thine is thy kingdom. The power and the glory. It's telling us about the glory that will come at the end of the day, which is the star I'm talking about. It will come your way in Jesus' name. It will come your way in Jesus' name. Look at that word, Father, again. The Father stands for faith. F stands for faith. If you are going to be a true father, you must be a man of faith that believes in the possibilities of God in you running your family. The A stands for authority. You must be a man of authority. A man of authority in your own family. And no matter what, you must do what God has called you to do. And then number three, you must be holy. I'm just summarizing this in a different way again. You must be holy in conduct, in character, in behavior, in attitude. You must be exemplary in the way and manner you live your life. Timothy 4, Timothy 4, 12 says, Let no man despise thy youth, but be you an example of the believer in word, in conduct, in love, in spirit, in faith, and in purity. You must be responsible. Be a responsible and a reliable Father, responsible for your children. When your children have needs, take care of them. Give us this day our daily bread. Be there to supply all their needs. Reliable. Be such a person that they can depend upon, they can trust. Uh, First Kings chapter 5, verse 56. First Kings chapter 5, verse 56. It's, Blessed be the Lord who has given rest to his people Israel according to all that he promised not one word has failed of all his good promises, which he spoke by Moses, his servant. That means God, when he, sp he speaks, his words are his word. You as a father, your word should be your word, and the Lord will help you, give you the grace in Jesus' name. You must be a lover of your family. You love your family with all the love of God. You love the people of God. You love the work of the Lord. You love the grace of God. You love the church of the Lord. And you give your support to everything and everything when you are daily serving the Lord. When you are daily following the Lord. And your family are saying, even if they don't agree with you now, down the line, down the line, they will come to the knowledge of the truth. I round up by telling you this. Star for your scars. Jesus, when he was on earth, his mother was not in the ministry with him. His brethren, the siblings, were not in the ministry with him. As a matter of fact, they were coming as a distraction to him. But Jesus did his part. By the time he was dead, not just the mother, but his brethren, they came to the faith. The star came. Your star will shine. Your labor will not be in vain. Let us rise upon our feet. And as we pray for fathers today, we are going to pray for our mothers too. Some of them are going through challenges as well. Tough time. Tough time. And only the grace of God can keep them and see them through. Their labors too will not be in vain. The Lord will strengthen them. The Lord will support every one of us. The Lord will keep every one of us. The Lord will preserve every one of us in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Whatsoever scar may be there in your life, understand the Lord will turn them to star. The scars you are having are the evidences that you are doing something. The scars, the pain, the agony, the disfigurement you are having are the proofs that you are doing something. Pray for the wisdom of God. 
Pray for the fruit of the Spirit. The fruit of the Spirit. The fruit of the Spirit. Pray for the grace of God. And I tell you, it's not just fathers in the biological family alone, even in the spiritual family. The grace to be faithful to the very end. The grace to serve to the very end that Lord will give unto you. Thank you.